episode 186 of Doctor Who Time and Space, a weekly uh, father and son Doctor Who podcast starring me, Lewis Mean. And me, Doctor Cool. Now we must apologise, today D. Cool will not be able to do much talking, <laughs> or as much as normal. Because he's got bad teeth. Bad teeth. And so needs, needs a doctor. Needs a different doctor. Needs doctor a talk. different doctor than the one you're used to on this show. But uh, I, will, I will pipe in when I can. Yeah, but I'll be doing most of the talking. Uh, sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to put up with my annoying voice mostly for the next hour. So what have we got on this week's show? Um, so we are going to be... We forgot to do it. No, we can do it in a minute. We can do it in a minute. Yeah. Um, th- that sort of ruined it. We are going to uh, look at our top six um, companions in the uh, sixth and final, I believe, part of the six mm, challenge. We will be giving our full thoughts on Power of the Daleks. Yeah, the new animated version. Um. We have our review of Class Episode 6, Detained. We'll have news and views from the universe. And we will be pressing the magic randomizer button. Excellent. Yeah. So, first of all, should we talk about what we've been up to recently? Yeah. In the who, and who related or geek related, really? What have you been up to? Um, well, in the universe, I suppose... As always, I've been listening to my audio, which at the moment is the Rosa Marinas, and I think that's quite good. It's with Patrick Troughton. You're getting towards the end of that one now, or is it still... Uh, yes, I'm on the final part now. Oh, cool. Um, obviously, I've been watching Power of the Daleks and Class. Um, we are going to... Um, no, not going to stupid me um last night i wa- obviously to check out the doctor who stuff i watched two of no need we'll have more on that later about the stuff that happened in the, the doctor who world um in children in need uh, d cool didn't watch that but but i did i've seen it since yeah he's he's seen the clip but mm. he hasn't seen the actual children in need and obviously i haven't seen all of it because i never watched all of children in need because you know, there's nothing good after a while. But, um, also, I got the latest issue of Dawn. We'll also talk about that later. Oh, cool. Um, and in the world of Doctor Who and stuff, I think that's about it this week. So, um, I've got my Doctor Who comics out this week. Oh, it? Oh, we've mm. got to look for it. That's okay. Never mind. I'll find it. We shall find it. Later. But, um... No, I think that's it. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll keep my talking pretty limited today, but um, carrying on with Walking Dead, and that's getting really, yeah. really exciting. It's an extra long edition this week. Yeah, the first Aaron time Hill. with Negan turning up at the camp to collect payment of dues, and um, it's been yeah, quite interesting. A few things in there, which a few things that your your mum was actually telling me about, which I hadn't actually caught when they were on live, which is quite good. Yeah. Um, aside from that. As with always at this time of year, I'm a celebrity get me out of here um, returns and um, I, for whatever reason, I don't know why, uh, but I do find that quite a watchable programme so it does tend to hinder my other television watching. I mean, I'm a celebrity, I don't watch it personally because I don't really watch much, but yeah. um, I'm a celebrity is on like every night if yeah. people don't know, apart from Tuesdays, yeah. uh, so... Beyond tonight, yeah, it's on, on Sundays. Tuesdays as well. It's only because there is football on this week. Is it going to be? Is it going to so, be on Tuesday? Uh, yeah, it would normally, unless yeah. they're saying unless there's football on, which is every couple of weeks or so. What if something dramatic happens in the jungle on the Tuesday night? Do they put it into the Wednesday yeah, night show? Yeah, the Wednesday show. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but that's always yeah. that's always watchable. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that probably sums up. Yeah. Sums so up not really week. much this week. Not but too much this week. Um, uh, bring us on to our, our big bulk item of the news, maybe. Uh, no, no, I think we have class first, don't we? Oh, yeah, we're going to do that now. 
Yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah, let's talk about class. Now. Are we going to yeah. pause it? No, we'll carry on. Just run, run with it. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, so then, now, we are going to be reviewing episode six of class. We will pause it. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so, we have been on the last few weeks in the podcast since episode 182, and we're on 186 today. Um, we have been taking a look at some of, um, I mean, all of class so far. Today we've reached episode 6 of the series. Um, we're going to share our thoughts. The episode's called Detained. Um, and this episode mainly focused on the five main characters, which are Charlie, Ram, April, Tanya and Matthias, all uh, trapped in a classroom together on a detention from Miss Quill. Should I take a little bit of a synopsis? Yeah, why not? Um, so the whole gang is thrown into detention by Miss Quill. Locked in her classroom, they are terrified when an explosion propels them out of space and time. Trapped, claustrophobic and floating in blackness with no way of escape. Although a mysterious asteroid fragment may be their key to freedom, it forces the gang to confess their deepest, darkest secrets to one another. As ugly truths come out, fractures start to appear in the friendship group. And then they make a chilling discovery. They're not alone. There's someone in there with them. Ooh. Um, so it was out today, the Saturday the 19th of November, because we review it on the day. Um, should I share my thoughts first? Yeah, share your thoughts first, yeah. Um, so class, episode six, I'd say is a very unique one compared to the others. Um, it's, as we t- talked about last week, we said that being in one location um, for the majority of the episode and probably all of the episode um, is um, either a really good thing because it focuses on character development it's really brilliant uh, or it could be a really bad thing but in this time I thought it was a good thing Um, episode 6 was very different as I kept saying sorry um then the first five um as yes it did focus on character development and it did focus on um on finding out more about um the group and it's quite good to see them fighting over various things and i think this episode the, the episodes before have been focusing on one single character definitely episodes two three four and five Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, with other storylines going on elsewhere with other characters um, and other characters involved but mainly focusing around one character and we'd had episodes like that with episode 2 with Ram episode 3 with Tanya and episodes 4 and 5 with April and um, this episode sort of focuses on all of them together and it's quite good to see their relationships in this situation of being trapped in one location and having to confess and, and their reactions to having to confess their darkest and deepest secrets and truths. The, the interesting thing about it, I thought, was that in many ways it was undoing a lot of the friendship that had been built up over the previous few episodes. Yeah. Because they... You know, they didn't all get on brilliantly to start with. And, you know, over time things developed, like April and, and Ram's relationship, yeah. um, how they treated Tanya, uh, how they treated Charlie. Yeah. Um, and all of that was really undone just through the truth, because they've all got these sort of, like, paranoias and things which were which were coming out. Um, and I'd, I'd be interested to see where that takes it, because obviously we, you mm. know, spoiler alert... But um, we we did have the whole issue between the, the, the potential breakup with the relationship of, of April and, and Ram. I mean, that has been developed for the last three episodes mm. between the two of them. Yeah. Um, and Ram, particularly, going to try and save April in the Shadowkin realm. 
and we find out in this episode that April doesn't love Ram as much as he does to her. Yeah, she's so, being a bit sensitive though, because she didn't say she didn't love him, she just said yeah. that she's more suspicious of it, because which is probably because she's never been in that position before. Yeah. Know. So, yeah. But it's, it's good, I, I, yeah, I like that, it's good. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, but no, yeah, I mean, it. it's quite an interesting point, what you said there about it sort of... Um, sort of reversing all of the things that had happened in the f- in the first five episodes with the characters together, and um, there were some fallouts in the group. I mean, you know, there's the um, you know the fallout between April and Ran. There's Tanya thinking apparently that she's uh thinks she doesn't fit in and um there's also troubles between Charlie and Mateus but I do I do think that this episode this episode was strong um and it was an it was a very interesting concept of the stone that um I mean it was different because it didn't have a proper monster in yeah. But it did have the prisoner inside the stone. You never saw it, a did rock you? thing. Uh, no, you didn't. You just saw the rock, and that prisoner wanted them to confess secrets. And I thought it was a really interesting concept. Yeah, funny enough, when the episode first started, I thought, oh, I don't really like this one so much. It feels no. like it's going to be a little bit silly. Uh, you know, particularly when they first all started arguing and everything, I thought, ah, this isn't doing it for me. But then as it went on, it grew on me more and more, and actually, yeah. come the end of it, I think it's p- possibly my second favourite episode of the series. It's one of my favourites, actually. It's definitely in the top half for mm. me out of the six. Um, it's in my top three out of the six. Yeah. Um, I do like I like episodes when they're in one space anyway, generally. With limited characters yeah. as well. Yeah. Because, I mean, you've got Catherine Kelly in it for a few minutes. Mm-hmm. Um but mainly it's just the five of them. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. At, at the end credits, I was thinking that's much less than the credits that were in the other one. Yeah, no, that's, that, that is true. What, um, where do you think it's going to go next then? Because, I mean, the, again, spoilers here, but we... Well, no, before we get on to that, what I, what I also liked was the whole concept that if you got rid of one prisoner, you'd take his place. Yeah, and, and, and Charlie. Charlie's about to be taken the place of the prisoner they just defeated and when who should idea. burst into the door? Miss Quill. Blast him with a gun, whereas we thought she couldn't use guns anymore. Yeah, but she has the arm removed out of her head. Yeah. So, so it'll be interesting to see where that hap- what goes on now because mm. she no, no longer is under Charlie's control. No, and I think the um, I think the next time trailer. And the title sort of symbolised that it's going to be the reverse of what it was last time, or this time, um, where it will be um, the five main characters will be in it for a few sec uh, for a sh- few seconds. And I did say that last week. It was my prediction. Yeah. Uh, they'll be in it for a few minutes, like Miss Quill was this time, but then it will mainly focus on. Quill and her um, and um, how Dorothy and others tried to get her freedom back in the arm out of her head. Yeah. So um, I think it, it's a really it's um, really interesting how they've chosen two different two different sort of stories to um, to link together and in a kind of like last time they did two parter, this is sort of a different type of two parter. Yeah, I would say because the next time started the same way as the next time for the last episode. Didn't yeah, it? I was a bit thick. I confused me for a second. Yeah, yeah. I I thought at the beginning, wait, this is just the next time for this episode, <laughs> like they do with the trailers. Yeah, but no, it's um, it, it really good, 
really good series actually. I've been very impressed with this series. I've been very impressed. I do hope it comes back. It's got, I must say, it has got a limited span. Yeah. On what it can do. Yeah. Um. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that it it does deserve another series. Yeah. And I think you know. Well, I don't know about you, but if I was if I was unit looking to recruit um, some more people to the cause, yeah, you you, you wouldn't look much further than, than those guys because they've seen been there and done it, haven't they? Yeah, I know. Well, particularly when we've seen some of the absolute cretins that do want to be in yeah. these days. <laughs> They'd fit in quite well, I think. Even Kate Stewart. Yeah, even Kate Stewart's not overly clever sometimes, is she? No. Then again, actually, I guess when it's a bit of a tangent, but when you watch the old ones, sometimes the Brigadier wouldn't do necessarily the right thing, would he? No, he wouldn't. Uh, yeah. Nah. Um, so, who, in terms of like the standout characters for this episode, what, what, what do you think? Um... Well, our favourite character, I think, is April. Yeah. But in this episode, I mean, Tanya's much better in this episode. I think it's her strongest episode. It's actually. her strongest episode, yeah. yeah. Um, I thought for the first for the episodes four and five, I thought she was a bit wasted, and I thought she was a bit unnecessary. Yeah. I thought in episodes four and five, I wouldn't guess she would be the, one of the main characters um, because all she did was just stand back and go, no. <laughs> um, but no, I really liked her. As, I really liked Vivian's, abhor- uh, uh, <laughs> Vivian's abhorrence um, in this episode. <laughs> so, So if I was to ask you... Too good, too bad. I was just going to come on to that, just in case you would have forgotten. <laughs> what would you What would you have as your too good and your too bad? Well, um, my good uh-huh. um, is that it focuses really well on um, on how it is in one place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's a lot of character development in this one. Yeah. I think that would be my 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 bit that's do that's do good. My my good yeah. for the two of us. Um would be as it went on, I think the interplay between the characters and the suspicions between them all just grew more and more and more as the sort of confession yeah. thing started coming out. And as I say, it was quite damaging to what was a very close group of friends. And we don't really know how that's gonna pan out because no. they all stormed out, didn't they? Really? Yeah. So I know. yeah. Okay. Too bad. Ooh. What was bad? What uh, was bad? M- Miss Quill wasn't in it. <laughs> How bad for you, is that? I like Miss Quill. She's quite good. Um. Bad. Is there anything bad? I thought it was going to be a bit bad when it first started. Actually. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to think of bad. But, but I, I That's can't... why I say Miss Quill was it? Well, Dorothy, Pooky Quest now. <laughs> I was expecting Pooky to appear in it. <laughs> um, I, I think if, if if anything, the character I find the weakest of them is probably Mateus. Yes. Yeah. But he's, I mean, on the initial premise, we sort of saw the f- the five. Yeah. Um. Charlie, April, Ram, yeah. Tanya, and um, Miss Quill. Yeah. Um, I think he, he's he's really there more as a sort of foil for for Charlie. Isn't yeah, he's he? sort so, of there. As his... So I'm going to put him as my bad, but that's a bit harsh. Yeah, I think. You know, he's okay as a character. Yeah. He's not strong. I'm. In terms, I don't class him. I class him as a main character, but I class him as a second a tier. Second tier, yeah. Actually, no, I'll tell you what I'm going to say. The way that Blumen Ram responded after finding out that April didn't love him quite as much, when he went completely over the top I know. and was immediately, oh, I'm going to go and see loads of other different people then. If, and then he made some comment about, um, you don't you get a really fit guy coming onto you and you don't. Respect it or something yeah. like that. It was like <laughs> how he, it's like how he was in episode yeah. one, yeah. and f- as I'm a, an episode two maybe, um, and in episodes one and two I did say I've changed it a lot and we've changed it a lot. I think 
definitely me. I said in my f- in the first two episodes when we did our double drop review. Yeah. I said that um, Ram is the weakest character, yeah. or Ram was the character that was the most unlikable. And I grew to like him in episode yeah. in the I recent th- episodes. I think he is the least likable character. He is, yeah. But he plays him well, I think, and, yeah. and it's a good character. It is a good character. Uh, but yeah. So, scores on the doors. The usual A star down to F fail. Um, last week we gave gave Bravish Heart a B plus, I think. Yeah. Uh, this week I'm going to give it an A. I think I'll give it an A as well. We give it the same every week, haven't yeah. we? We've agreed so far. I think we, order wise, we might change a little bit this one. I think this yeah, is my, my second favourite. Yeah, mine is third. Yeah. In terms of. Order. My order so far. Let let's do our orders. Okay. Um, my order from the bottom. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether you'll do it from the top or the bottom, but I'm gonna do it from the bottom. Uh, the bottom. Um, at sixth place. Uh, Coach of the Dragon Tattoo, episode two. Yeah. Um, fifth place. Um, Night Visiting, episode three. Yeah. Um, fourth place. Um, Bravish Heart, last week's yeah. episode five. Um, and uh, third place, this one, uh-huh. um, detained. Uh, second place for tonight we might die. Yeah. The first episode and first is co-owner of a lonely heart. Okay, well mine's pretty similar to that, so I won't need to mind do more other than to say it's just the second and third place to swap around. I think today yeah. is my second favourite, and the first one will be my third favourite. Okay. So yeah, oh, good, still a really good series. Yeah, all the cast are good. Yeah. Patrick Ness has written it good. I think what's going to happen is we're going to find out what happened to Miss Quill yeah. um, next week. And then it's going to build up to some big final episode. Yeah, where, where the two stories tie in. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there's going to be... I think the Shadowkin will be back for yeah. the last episode. And I think it was confirmed to be called The Lost, I think. Okay. So, um, so the interesting thing about it as well is in his confessions... And this was before he actually picked up the rock, but Charlie admitted that he wanted to see the Shadow King dead. Yes, and I think there so, could be something to do with that in the final. Yeah. I think the Shadow King are the main monsters of series one. Yeah. I think. I remember Wizards vs. Aliens, which was sort, which was written by Russell T Davies. Yeah. And they had the creatures called the Necros, didn't they? Yes. And they were in it too much. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hope in this series, in class, I hope if they do a series two, the Shadow Kin are cool, but I hope they they do them for series one and have a different set yeah. of villains or yeah. in series two. I agree. As the main focus. Yeah. Okay. So there yeah. you go, that's our thoughts on class and we'll look forward for the last two. Um yeah, and then we can get our show back. Yeah, I know. We can have uh, the, the game shows again. back. <laughs> yeah. No, but the, by the way, there's no news about class this week, so. But that mm-hmm. does bring us on to the news. <laughs> so then, um, this week was the week that we'd been anticipating for a long time, or for two weeks, <laughs> um, and that was children in need. So, Children in Need, last night, um, we'd not been anticipating it because of the EastEnders dance medley, but we'd been anticipating it because of the Doctor Who sketch, uh, Doctor Who scene. And last night, we saw a scene from Return of Doctor Mysterio. Um, me and Deke, uh, I watched it live, Deke watched it this morning. Uh, so, um, what did you think of the clip, Deke? Oh, that was, it was um, like, like you said to me on the on the way round here in this morning. You said it wasn't only Christmassy. Yeah. But I think that was probably. I think the episode will be. I think it's just probably yeah. that it's not Christmas. So. Yeah, I think <laughs> it'll probably be a bit like Husbands of River Song. It's set. Yeah. It might be set at Christmas, but it won't be. You know, it will have Christmassy sort mm. of themes in it, but it won't be overly Christmassy. I think it's obvious it's going to be a fairly light-hearted episode. Yes. I think um, I like the villain that was in there. And whether he's yeah. a main villain, I don't um, suppose he is, or whether he's just a he's, he had a sort of like James Bond sort of villain feel to him, yeah. didn't he? I don't know whether he is the main villain or whether there's some sort of 
you know, do you think there'll be some sort of alien threat, or do you think it'll just be human villains? Uh, I think it might be human villains this time. Yeah. Around. Well, it should be a bit different than past Christmas special. I think. I think so. Yeah. I, th- I think that's the good thing about it. I mean, whether it's going to be good, um, I t- it's a really awful thing to say, but I, I, I still don't have as high hopes for this last series of Doctor Who as I have had for for previous series. What do you mean, this last series? As in um, Stephen Moffat's last series. Oh, yeah. And I'll yeah. include the Christmas special in that. I don't know. I, I don't know what it is, and I'm hoping that I'm completely wrong um, on the basis that I was so badly wrong for class. Yeah. But I think. It, I think and we were both wrong about class. Yeah. And uh, most of the fandom was wrong about class, whether they still believe it's not good or not. Yeah. But, you know... The Christmas specials aren't overly popular, mm. and I think this year's probably won't be again. But the clip did look very interesting. It looked very interesting. I wouldn't say that it looked. I don't know whether I'm talking complete rubbish here. If I think of it like Capaldi's Christmas ones so far, Last Christmas and Husbands of the Sun. They were both two of the best Christmas ones we've had. I think. Yeah, in but, my opinion, uh, in our opinion. But. That was said having watched the whole episode. Yeah. Um, this di- this didn't look from the clip like it was going to stand up as well as these two. But having said yeah. that, it's one clip from a whole episode. I know, in from the clip from last Christmas a couple of years ago at Children in Need, I wouldn't have thought. I mean, yeah. it looked cool because Santa was in it and looked very Christmassy and stuff. And I was like, this will be okay. It won't be the best it won't be one of the best if not the best christmas special yeah and it was my favorite probably funny enough with that one um i actually thought that one i didn't really have that high hopes for it because i didn't like the idea of santa being in it yeah i, I know but silly. i thought it's i like christmas you know yeah. i really uh, i i really enjoy christmas and that's why i've already planned our christmas special for the podcast have but, you? Oh. yeah We've, well, it's your choice on what our so-called randomizer will be. Yeah, we'll you've be got to choose it before I start watching the Christmas okay. one, so I know what one. Well, we're we, we, what we're going to do there. So we're talking amongst ourselves now, yeah. podcast people. But we, we'll set up a special Christmas randomizer. Yes, which but we'll randomly select one. But the thing is, we'll have to, we'll have to do it yeah, before do it December. Yeah, that's fine with it. Because soon. I want to w- start watching the Christmas yeah. ones on the second. Th- you are Mr. Christmas, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> so, um, I forgot what we were talking about. Um, we were still talking about Mr. Mr. Mysterio, weren't we? Yeah, Doctor. Yeah. Doctor Mysterio, sorry. Um, yeah, it, so it, it looks it looks like it's going to be fun. It does, yeah. It looks I, don't, like I don't think it's going to be competing with Genesis of the Daleks, no. the best episode of all time. I don't I think still, it'll be the best episode of Christmas. I, I still prefer Capaldi's Doctor in the darker episodes. Yeah. Albeit, I was pleasantly surprised with how well he did the comedy in the last Christmas one. Yeah. Um, Matt Lucas makes an appearance in the clip as well, mm-hmm. um, as well as um, the character who is played by Charity Wakefield, the investigative journalist. Yeah. Um, Matt Lucas sort of makes a clever remark about some sort of states or capital cities or something. Yeah. Um, I mean, Steve Moffat did make a remark that Nardo was going to be different. I can't see him being different in the Christmas one, but no. I can see him being different in series 10. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so too. Moffat lies though. I don't know, it's, that's got nothing again to do with, with, with Matt Lucas, because I like him. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know. I, I just found the Nardo character a little bit sort of uh, grating. Yeah. Another sketch last night, which you didn't watch, was the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them sketch, which had an appearance of the Doctor himself. What did he do anything? He just said something about... He was in it for a little bit, but um, it was just about loads of celebrities and Eddie Redmayne trying to find Pudsey. And and the Doctor said, um, what that big green tentacle alien thing... (laughs) <laughs> and then he went into some sort of remark about Pudsey. Mm. I don't know. Because that film's out now, isn't it? The, yeah, it was Pudsey out yesterday. Piece. I don't know what it's, been, what it's like. 
No. But have you read any reviews of it? So no. It's a bit of a side, but... No, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't really fancy it. Really? Um, I enjoyed the Harry Potter ones eventually. Yeah. So, who knows? Who knows? Who There's knows? five of them. They're making five of them? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Ooh, okay. Bit of a tangent there. Yeah. Okay, um, so if that's that bit of news, anything else to report on the children need? I don't think Matters. so, that's it, I okay. think. So did we have other news this week? We did. I remember that we did, we had some particularly good news actually, some big news. We did have a bit of big news, and we had a title for Series 10 at last! We have some news about Series 10. Great. Phew. <sighs> Okay, what was the big news that we were talking about then? So something we've been we've been talking about a little bit for a few weeks now. Yes. Yeah, so, Rona Monroe, writer of Survival, the last episode of Classic Who. Please don't say it's going to be the best. It, it, please don't say it's going to be the last episode of New Who as well. That she's <laughs> going to write. But um, Rona Monroe, writer of Survival, will return to pen. A story in series 10, which will be called The Eaters of Light. Ooh, good name. It is a good name. Um, so, um, what do you think, um, Rona Monroe? You haven't seen Survival? But no, she... but it looks like a good one. There's some good clips yeah. in Survival that I have seen. Yeah, she'll be writing episode 9. Eaters of Light is episode 9. How many, of... how many episodes are there? 12. Well, okay, so towards the end. Not including the Christmas special. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I think Survival is a very good story. Um, and I think it's one of my favourites from Sylvester McCoy's. Hmm. She, was, uh, she only wrote that one, is that right? Yes, she did, because it was the last one of Classic Kit. I think she probably would have written more if it carried hmm. on. But due to... Uh, she said in Dawn um, that... It was a very sad time that she had to, and she had to write the last classic who. Mm. Um, and it would be really good to see how she writes episodes in New Who, because I can see survival is a very, so very 80s episode. Yeah. But I can also see it, how it's got ideas from it, from the RTD era, definitely the beginning of it. Yeah. I do believe that sort of got the first part is a sort of human feel. It's oh, got okay. lots of human locations. It's got the doctor shopping in a supermarket. It's got mm. this hunting place that's um, a club. It is one of the uh, Seventh Doctor episodes I would like to see, actually. Yeah, it is really good, and it's one that you really have to see. I only watched it recently. Like I say, you, you did a video on it, didn't you? Which yeah. You broadcast on your YouTube channel. Yes. But, um, yeah. But um, be really exciting to see how um, Rona Monroe um, will adapt her story writing because we know that she is a very pop, uh, apparently a popular writer at this moment. Okay. In time. Yeah. For some reason, but um, I think it would be very. It's it was very interesting when I heard that Rona would be coming back to pen a story. So, and you maybe you were going to come on to this anyway. But I'll, I'll, I'll jump ahead and then you can shout me down. Oh no, um, no, you're not going to talk about the other writer. Are yeah, you? no, I was going to ask you what what other writers do we know of? Oh, I'll, I'll go on to that in a sec. Oh, okay. 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 We can talk about that in a sec. Thank you for reminding me, though. Uh, the, <laughs> even though I already knew. The guest cast includes Rebecca Benson, Daniel Kerr, uh, Dewan Adikuwan. How come every single Doctor Who guest star has to have some sort of complicated... Every single Doctor Who episode has to have someone mm -hmm. with a complicated name. Just to humiliate you every week. Yeah. Is, isn't it? Brian Vernal, um, Ben Hunter... Aaron Fugara, Sam Aduwumimari, and Billy Matthews. That's a simple name. <laughs> um, so, as you were saying, someone else. Um, we don't have any more titles released okay. for Series 9. It's strange. Series 10, sorry. Um, but it has been revealed 
that um, the writer of episode 5 of series 10 shall be Jamie Matheson, who Ooh. wrote uh, such classics as Mummy on the Orient Express and Flatline. And in series 9, he co-writ The Girl Who Died with Stephen Moffat. Yeah. So that's good, isn't it? We, 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 yeah. We're glad to see him back. We, I kind of guessed he would be back yeah. because in Peter Capaldi's run, he's written the first two he wrote particularly were really strong. So do we know? Um, do we know who all the writers are now, or do we do we know a big chunk of who of the writers? We know a big chunk. So who who do we know? We know that episode one will be written by Stephen Moffat, mm-hmm. and I can presume the final two. Presumably, yeah. If there's a two-parter at the end, which he said there will be some two-parters, so I'd say oh, that right, okay. the only two-parter there will be the final, uh-huh. and it will go back to series A format. Um, so he'll probably be writing that f- two-part final. Um, then we've got um, Frank Cottrell Boyce f- from In Forest of the Night. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Dollard yeah. from Face the Raven. Uh, new writer, um, Mike, whatever he's called. Yeah. I forgot his whatever name. Whatever he's called. Um, yeah. Episode 5, Jamie Matheson. Yeah. And Roland Monroe. Okay. And well, Mark Gattis. I was going to say, has Gattis been confirmed? Um, yes. And how many stories are there in this series? 12. 12. So, assuming Moffat was 2, that probably leaves us with three more writers... Unless, Unless somebody two partners. Stephen Moffat does sometimes write hmm. um, episodes, like he did with Series 8, he wrote Listen in the mid yes. part of the series. That's right, yeah. Sometimes he writes other episodes in the yeah. series. Oh, that's a nice picture. Um, Matheson says his newest episode is very, very scary, like seriously so. Uh, let's go behind the sofa and just say, stay there until it's over, scary. It's got more shocks and tense scenes than anything I've ever written. It's also a taut thrill ride, a gag test, and a pitch black satire. And for the first time, I'm writing for Bill and Nardole. Uh, the guest cast includes Kieran Boo, uh, Justin Salinger, Peter Caulfield, Mimi Nidwini, um, and Karen Braben. Episodes 5 and 9 are filming now as part of Block 4, so... Okay, that's interesting. 5 and 9 filming at the same time. Yeah. Well, sir. There must be some sort of link between the two. So do we know how many are left to film? Uh, They filmed filmed six of them. Okay. So that means there's six left. They're halfway through. Comes. And when is it coming back out again? April. April. Actually, it's not too far off, really, is it? Not really, if you think about it. We're, we're closer to it than we are to the last series. Closer to it than we were last week. Yeah. So do we have any other news? Yes, we do. And um, some rumours now. Mm-hmm. We've got two rumours from the Mirror that came out this past week. Okay. Um, so the Mirror are reporting that Doctor Who will see a major... Shake up in 2018 under Chris Chibnall, with BBC bosses wanting Doctor Who to feel like a brand new show again and feature a new, younger Doctor and companion. I'd say Paul McHugh was young enough. Um, yeah, but I, th- I think they. Yeah. Probably, by the sounds like they probably just want to hear something completely fresh. Yeah. Yes. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. No. Let's read the report follows. Insiders say the bro- Broadchurch writer will have a clean slate to start afresh with uh, for his first series. Rather bad news for actress Pearl McKee, who plays new assistant Bill in Stephen Moffat's last run, currently filming for next year. Yeah, we haven't even seen her yet, and they've already sort of rumoured of her departure. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pearl is uh, yet to see, be seen by viewers, is said to have been signed on a one-year contract and is expected to depart with Peter Capaldi and Moffat after 2017's Christmas special. I think it needs to be a two-parter if they're going to fit in. They can't fit in the Doctor, Companion and writer leaving in 60 minutes. Yeah, I, do you know, I don't like Christmas specials over regenerations. No, I need I don't think they need to. I think they're, they're, they're better, and it's better from a viewing perspective of bringing 
people in to watch it to do it outside of it because people watch the Christmas specials anyway. Yeah. And, you know, I'd, I'd, I think I would, I would rather that they... Do it in the final. Do it in the final, yeah. And bring, I'd, I'd rather the new Doctor came in for the Christmas special. Yeah, like they did with the Christmas Invasion. Yes, yeah, I'd much rather that. But because no, that can have some light-hearted mm, side effects. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, the Christmas special is just dreary. Because yeah, I don't think it's the best... I don't think the Christmas special is the best one for uh, Moffat to go out on either. No, but I think he will. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, let's see. The replacement Time Lord is likely to be played by a younger actor in a bid to help boost the flagging sales of dolls, books, DVDs and toys. It always has to be about merchandise, doesn't it? I do, I do think, though, however much I, I love Capaldi, and he, he's one of my favourite Doctors, I do think that probably an older Doctor now isn't necessarily the best thing in terms of the merchandise. I can see where they're coming yeah. from. You know, I, the kids like to see somebody they can associate with. Yeah. I think New Who has all been young Doctors, hasn't it, until Capaldi. Yeah. Um, an interesting thing here... BBC Chiefs have also stressed that they want a full series every year. Um, there hasn't been one at all in series in 2016, and more accessible story arcs from those seen in recent times. And I think we all want the first one. We all want a full series every year, mm-hmm. don't we? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think probably the Beeb has thought well. It's it's very clever. It is quite an adulty series now, and uh, I, I think the Beeb probably want to see it move back to being a family based show again yeah which is good in a way yeah in a way <laughs> in a way in a way um so then another mirror rumour should we talk about this monsters yeah yeah why not yeah. um a rumour from the mirror declares that there's going to be some um monsters um from monsters in, in Doctor Who in sure enough in 10 um, and some details or rumours of details have been released and um, it definitely episode 2 I've seen pictures of the monster and the episode 2 is said to feature killer robots that have emojis, faces, they like to give hugs then reduce their victims to skeletons. There is a picture of Peter Capaldi and Bill uh, no, the Doctor and Bill with um, one of the robots uh, so I believe who wrote this one do we know Frank Cottrell boys oh right okay yeah um episode 3 features a snake monster that lives under the Thames written by Sarah Donald okay um episode 4 we find out why our floorboards squeak and there are giant wood lice in there written by Mike Bartlett okay. or at least we think okay these episodes we think they are written by the people they are mm-hmm. But who knows? They may swap the order around. They? they may swap the order around. Mm-hmm. They may not be in this order. Do you think? Uh, have you finished talking about yeah. that? Or, yeah. Do you think, with it being Moffat's last season, that he will be, he will have some sort of craving to introduce another classic Q monster that we've not seen return? I want the Sea Devils, mm. but I do think he wanted it to be a new show. So I think definitely for the majority, I think there'll be Daleks in it. Yeah. Maybe Cybermen, but I think. It probably will be um, majority on new monsters. What's the betting that it's Missy that causes the Doctor's regeneration? Uh, yeah, it's either Missy or the Daleks, or mm-hmm. some sort of old villain will do the Doctor's regeneration. Yeah. Missy, probably, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, any more news? Um. Yeah. One more, I think. And that is. Dorm. Dorm is out. Hey. Yay. I've already got it. Um, this month's Dorm celebrates 50 years of the second Doctor, Patrick Troughton. Uh, in November 1966, Doctor Who undertook its trickiest challenge to date. Could it survive with a brand new lead actor? Half a century later, Dorm celebrates the lasting legacy of Patrick Troughton. In this issue... Um, Dawn meets the team that uh, brought the second Doctor debut adventure, The Power of the Daleks, back to life as a brand new animation. Doctor Who showrunner Stephen Moffat answers readers' questions. 
Dawn reveals the story behind the man who designed the original TARDIS set in 1963, Peter Barachi. Um, we continue the interrogation of Doctor Who directors Daniel O'Hara, Ed Basil Getty, Daniel Nettium and Douglas McKinnon. Um, the second um, and concluding part of Bloodsport, the latest comic strip adventure featuring the Twilight's Doctor and Jess. Uh, the Pandorica, uh, the Time Team uh, watched the nail-biting finale of the 11th Doctor's first series with the months, uh, this month's two-parter, The Pandorica Opens the Big Bang. Uh, writer Russell T Davies reveals fascinating new facts about his 2005 classic End of the World in this issue's Fact Fiction feature. Uh, previews of all of the latest Doctor Who CD and book releases, and the Watcher ponders on what Nissa of Tracken really got up to. Mm. It's out now, um, so you can buy that in all good news agents and Forbidden Planet. Fantastic. So that's all the news that we're going to talk about this week. You can catch more on the Mr. Liz Moon um, adventures.weebly.com website. But now it's time to find out. Our top six companions. So then, the sixth mm, challenge comes to a proper conclusion this week. Oh yeah. Or for what a while, we mm, we're going on a we're going on a hiatus for at least a for at least the Christmas period. Yeah, not not for the show. Not for the show, but for, for the, the mm, for challenge. the mm, challenge. And we will have like a ten day break at Christmas, but we. Yeah. Um, that's because we're busy, but um, we won't have a break from until then. Um, so the six mm challenge, sort of, we look at our six favourite stuff um, of certain topics Doctor Who related, and we have to challenge each other's decisions by saying, why didn't you choose that, or, or stuff like that. Um, and then we tried to make an ultimate top three list afterwards. Um, so um, today we're looking at our top six companions in part six. Um, and uh, we'll be trying to challenge each other's decisions. Okay, see if we can change their minds. Yeah, so up here I've wrote six mm, challenge. Okay. <laughs> um, companions. Um, so I've put Sarah Jane. Okay. Jamie. Mm -hmm. Clara. Yeah. Martha. Yeah. Leela. Yeah. And Ian. Okay. How many of these have I got? Let me see. Um. Hey, you beat them again. Sarah Jane. Oh, okay. well, I, I, I certainly had a feeling you had said Sarah Jane. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think you made a fairly big omission somewhere along the um, I think I have got, looking at this, three the same as you. And three that we haven't chosen. Yeah. Okay. So I have got top of the top dog, top of the pile. I haven't put mine in order. We can't put ours in order okay, because I, we've got okay, top yeah. three lists. Okay, well you know that Leela's going to be top anyway. Yeah, yeah. top so of It's obvious. Leela. Um, Amy Pond. Sarah Jane, Zoe, Victoria, and Clara. Ooh. Wait, what? What was the second one? Leela, Amy Pond, Sarah Jane, Zoe, Victoria, and Clara. Why did you say Liz? Because I always might have reserved this down oh, to yeah. challenge you with. No, no. Um. <laughs> so the the ones that I didn't get: Zoe, Victoria, and Amy. Yeah. Um, okay, should I discuss them? Yeah, what do you... Um, so, so there's, yeah, there's, there's something you don't agree with. Amy, I, 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 I'm glad you've put Sarah Jane in there. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you've put Clara in there. I'm glad you've put... Um, Leela. Yeah. She was always going to be in there. Yeah. Um, but Amy, I know what you, you like Amy. Yeah, I did like um, Amy. I think Martha's a better companion. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't find Amy strong as a companion. Oh, no, 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 I don't. Th I think a lot of people would probably agree with you. I just, I liked. 
I don't think Amy would have worked well with a lot of the doctors. Yeah. She worked very, very well with Matt Smith's mm. doctor. She worked, fact, better with, with, she worked better with him than... Um, I think she was the perfect fit for him. I yeah. think yeah. Clara didn't really suit with him that much. No. No, indeed. Or as much as she did with Pete, uh, as, as much as Karen Gillan. But Amy is far from my top six. Yeah. Um, the, I think she was good. Yeah. I, I, I really liked Clark. Uh, in fact, Amy potentially is my second favourite companion. Really? Yeah. Which I'm, I'm, am I right in that? I don't know. It's hard. Well, I, I, I do like Sarah Jane a lot. Yeah. Uh, um, Victoria and Zoe, both choices from the Patrick Troughton era. Yeah. I think they're quite good. I. Uh, Victoria's a very likable character, but she's mm. she's very screamy, and I can see why you have her in her list because she is a good companion. Ironically, um, initially, I didn't like Victoria very much the first no. time I saw her. I, I found her too. I screamy, didn't either. But, but she she really warmed to me and then when we met her as well at the comic con she was a lovely person yeah um not that that's influencing my dis- decision on me yeah we're the focusing on companions and not people here <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but deborah was really nice but yeah. um but i i really like victoria there's a real sweet yeah. innocence about her character that you don't really see in companions anymore no there's there's a couple of Obvious omissions from both of our lists, actually, which I think a lot of people would 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 say are, 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 are wrong. Um, yeah. Or probably the main one being um, Ace. Yes. And a lot of people really like Ace because she was the first of the real strong female. Yeah. Donna. Ones. Donna's. Um. Uh, that Donna's probably the cool's. Who do you prefer, Donna or Mel? I you ha- haven't seen any Mel episodes. I haven't seen so any, but I, I think it would be difficult for me to sit through a whole Mel episode. Do you prefer I th- Donna? I think I would actually prefer Donna, to be fair. Yeah. But I, I do dislike Donna with a vengeance, as you know. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, Donna and Ace, maybe Rose? Yeah. Um, are three that haven't made a chart that probably would make the majority of fans' charts. Yeah. Um, Can you remind me of yours again? I'm trying to think now. So you had Leela, you had Sarah Jane, you had Clara. Those are the three the same. Jamie, Martha and... Ian. Ian. Now I'm going to challenge Ian. Okay. Now there's one that you can challenge him with. Yeah. Um, that I will That I will change if you get it. Okay. I'm going to challenge it with Liz. You've made the right choice there. Yeah. The reason I'm going to do that is because Liz is a is a, another one of these companions that I never really liked when I first saw clips with her in. But then when you watch the episodes with her in... She's a very she's, strong character. Yeah, she's, she's worthy. I think we talked about it on this very podcast once where we said that she's actually worthy, character-wise, of being a new who because there's a lot yeah. of strength to her. She's not your run-of-the-mill screamy... She women. isn't, no. She's a Definitely woman. in the two we've watched on the round of that, yeah. yeah. um, And she's in a few classics, Beard from Space, Inferno, you mm-hmm. know, Silurians, um, and Ambassadors of Death. Yeah. Four great episodes. But, yes, you did make the right choice, because I was choosing between Ian and Liz, and I thought, Liz, who should I choose? And I chose Ian but you've made the right choice there because I am going to replace Ian with Liz. Okay. So then, um, I'm going to go through a few... Uh, I'm going to say the same question to you. Is Liz not in your chart? Why is She's she not? not? Liz isn't in my chart. And um, why? Fair point. I think probably the most vulnerable one, and again I really like her. And she's dropped she's dropped down my list without having ever done anything wrong. And probably probably my most vulnerable position. Probably my two most vulnerable positions, I should say, are Zoe. Yeah. And Clara. Yeah, I mean Zoe. Do you think the reason about Zoe is because you haven't seen her in 
an episode for a while. Maybe. So you, your Probably, memory's yeah. sort of a bit more fuzzy. Yeah. Because you haven't seen... We need a, a Zoe episode, but not the Dominators to pop up on the randomizer. <laughs> Preferably the Invasion. Yeah, or Crotons. Or the nice War Games. Again, wouldn't it? Or the War Games. Yes. Yes, indeed. One that we've got. I think the two companions that are the best challenges for Zoe and Clara in my list are Liz, that you mentioned, and one that you've got in yours, Jamie. Yeah. I can't let both of them in, but I am going to let Liz in ahead of Clara. Interesting. Okay. Yep. Um, Clara is my favourite New Who companion. Mm. I'm just going to put that in there. Yeah. I think she's the strongest. Definitely in Series 8. Yes. I found her a bit annoying in Series 9, but I think her character was meant to be. Yeah. But she was a very strong character. I think she did overstay a while from a little bit. Jenna Coleman was really good as her, though. She's a very good actress, I think. Yeah. I think Jenna Coleman's possibly the best actress out of all of those companions. Yeah. I think it, not necessarily in terms of companions, but in terms of actors. In, ter- in terms yeah. of actors, yeah. Yeah, and actors, then, yeah. Yeah. So who's overtaking in your list? Or? So uh, so I, my final list is going to be Leela, Amy Pond, Sarah Jane, Zoe, Victoria and Liz. Okay, so do we agree on three again now? Because Clara's Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's stage um, three, yeah. Mine is Sarah Jane, mm-hmm. Jamie, Clara, Martha, Leela and Liz. So that's ours. What we'd like to ask you, dear listeners. No, but we need to do our top three, do we? Or should we just leave it there? We'll just leave it there, I think. Yeah, OK. Um, yeah. What, what we'd, we'd like to know from you, dear listeners, uh, well, who are your favourite companions? Yeah, you can let us know your top... Th- we'll, we'll do this at the end again. Yeah. But uh, we'll let you know... Let us know your top six companions um, and we may be reporting back on those you can tell us at dr who time un space on twitter that's n time un n yeah space or mark with a c mark freak geek on twitter and, twitter. and then you can contact us on youtube and um and Podomatic, you can leave your comment you at can the indeed. time and space on Podomatic. So plenty, plenty of places to yeah. discuss. With please, you. please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Um, I'll probably post the questions just in case people haven't seen this show and want mm-hmm. to reply. Excellent. Good. So we're settled on that. That's the last of the six mm challenge. For a while, yeah. May, for, for this year. Yeah. For 2016, it's the last... Six mm, challenge, but I I have a few features planned for the next couple of weeks, for the next few weeks, um, which I'll let you know what they are. I'll I'll let you know what next week's is at the end of the show. In two weeks' time, we will have a class season overview as our main feature. Okay, sounds good. Um, so depending on whether there's any breaking news, uh, we'll probably have that after our class review. Okay, so, so that yeah. brings us on to um, another section of the show. But we talk what was a mammoth, mighty discovery yeah. of an episode. Well, not really a discovery, but an animation discovery uh-huh. of Power of the Daleks. <laughs> so, I must say, a spoiler alert from this point on. Mm hmm. Um, we didn't do one for class, but we, did we didn't really spoil much. I got a few spoiler alerts in. Did you? Before I spoil anything too much, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. But we um, definitely should have done this one, because yeah. a lot of people haven't even seen this yet, because yeah. it doesn't come out I mean, it has, from looking online, some people have got it early. Yeah. When they've pre-ordered it. Okay. But um, m- the majority of people probably haven't seen this yet. Um, we were in the first 1,000. We were, uh, So yes. we have BBC art cards, uh, uh, Power of the Daleks art cards, but... Right, um, on their way. They're yeah, we're in the first 1,000 people to have at least watched episode one. Uh-huh. But um, if you haven't watched Power of the Daleks, uh, or at least, you know, or at least haven't don't know what happens in it, or don't want this to be spoiled, then um, please... 
turn off at this point. But, but we're trying not to spoil any story. As yeah. Such. We'll just give our comments and thoughts on it. It will be a very interesting discussion, though, because this is something massive that's happened in the Doctor Who universe, and this is an animated version. I will this week be doing the story synopsis. Mm-hmm. Um, because of, obviously of Deacle's tooth. Um, so, um, tooth, the whole tooth, and nothing but the tooth. Yes. Um, should I turn this round? That'd be right, that'd be Will fine. it be okay? Yeah. Um, Ben and Polly um, are in the TARDIS, and they've just seen the first Doctor, um, or the Doctor that they knew, change into the second Doctor, and. Polly believes that he is the Doctor, but Ben thinks he's an, an imposter. I um, can hear you kicking that pen. Oh, take it away. <laughs> so the TARDIS lands on Vulcan, um, and the Doctor sees the murder of the Examiner, um, and uh, who's a man set uh, sent from Earth to check on the human colony. After checking the body, the Doctor discovers a badge. Um, The Doctor, Ben and Polly, pretending to be as the security team assumes the examiner and his party, back to the colony. Um, They go back to the colony. Uh, Lesterson has discovered a crashed space uh, capsule. Lesterson is the colony scientist. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, The Doctor goes to uh, investigate the capsule and he soon finds uh, two Daleks inside. Um, and they see a little mutant crawling across the floor. Uh, Lesterson brings the Daleks back to life. Um, and he brings in uh, two uh, helpers, Resno and Jane Lee, to um, help bring back the Dalek. The Dalek is uh, your servant. Um, and that's what I'm going to say in the story synopsis, yeah. I think. Okay, I, th- I think on the basis we don't want to do any spoilers as such, I think that's a good We idea. are quite far that's way into idea. the show, though. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so, what did you think? I am very, very glad that they decided to do this. This was the perfect one yeah. to do, wasn't it? As we know from the specials, the bonus features, there's very little of the original footage that remains yeah, about there's, seven minutes it was yeah it was about six minutes probably yeah but it did have little bits like little snaps hmm. of footage Mo- uh, some of it was telesnaps yeah some of the footage yeah and some of it was the trailer so but um i thought this was probably my second favorite dalek episode Below Up Genesis. Board. Just below Genesis, yeah. Yeah, I think this one is really strong. Yeah. Um, I, I've been looking forward to watching this since it was announced. Yeah. I'm glad it's that real, it's so good. A real gradual build-up to it. It's quite slow, it, yeah. It is quite slow. Because the Daleks aren't really bad until part four, five. Yeah, no, that's right. So they, they, sort of, they build and build and build, and they become yeah. more dalek without yeah. giving too much away. Because, you know, the Daleks sort of develop in terms of their personality changes. It was great seeing Patrick Troughton. It was, yeah. It and was great. He's particularly kooky in this one, isn't he? Because yeah. I think he's, he's got that little bit of regeneration fever that they often seem to get. I really and, uh, I really like his performance in this yeah. episode. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's always quite a zany character anyway, wasn't he? But yeah. He seemed particularly zany this time around. I think his, his doctor... Um, He's very good. I haven't yeah. seen a Patrick Troughton one for a while now. No, that was, it, was, it was nice to see. So, see and I haven't seen a new episode that I've never seen before for a while. Mm. And most people haven't seen this one. Yeah. So um, I thought it was a very enjoyable watch. Yeah. Um, what should we go on to first? More what? about the episode or more about the animation? I wanted to ask you about the an- animation. Okay. What, what did you make of it? Because it's obviously something they haven't done yeah. to that extent before. It's a new animation technique. Mm-hmm. It's a new person who's done it. It's yeah. different. But and um, this is the first um, all animated ep- uh, story. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I think that 
this made me want to watch more because it's so good in that terms of animation. Yeah, I, um, I really enjoyed it. And they did this all in six months or just under six months, yeah. which is quite quite a small amount of time really to do all of this work on Power of the yeah. Daleks to do research and um, artwork and all sorts of things. You said to me at one point, and I completely agree with you, um, there are times, and it's, just, it's a really stupid thing to say, because yeah, it I know. doesn't sound like it can be right, oh, but yeah. there are times when you forget that you're watching an animation. I know, I think one time I was looking at the background and I thought, that looks real, Yeah. but it was animated. Yeah. It just... It was so good in terms of animation. I'd say it was better than the animation techniques they've been using before. Yeah, I mean, the animated so. episodes have always been strong in terms of their looks, but I think this new technique is really good. Yeah. I definitely want to see them do, do more. I think next they need to move on to the next Dalek one, which is Evil of the Daleks. Mm -hmm. And Evil of the Daleks, I think, does have... Let me look it up on Wikipedia. Because I believe that there may be some episodes, um, yeah, uh, episode two is still around. Okay. Completely. So I wonder what, what they would do in that situation. If they were issuing, say, Evil of the Daleks, would they do it with one film, or would they just do a cartoon of the whole lot? I don't know, because if they'd have, if they'd had the... I think they should put part two on there, the the normal version of part two. Do you know what I'd like to see? Or, or in a bonus feature or something. Yeah, that's how I'd like to see yeah. it. I'd like to see the whole thing in cartoon for consistency, but then have the original episode included as a yeah. bonus feature. Yeah, and it would be the same amount of... It would be the same amount of um, work to do mm -hmm. if they, you know, if they didn't do an animated version of episode two, it would be the six episodes, which is what this time was. So. Okay. And there are missing scenes, so yeah, I mean, do, it depends whether they do a BBC store launch again, yeah. or whether they just do it on DVD straight away. I don't it'd be interesting to find out over time when BBC hopefully will release some form of um, article about how successful doing this has or hasn't been. Yeah. Whether it's captured people's imagination, I guess we won't really know until the DVDs are out. Yeah, I mean... Um, Watching this on the BBC store, the BBC store is brilliant. Yeah. And we were w really w one of the first people to watch episode one. So I think it was a really good experience yeah. to watch um, to watch these episodes. And I think, I agree with you, this is one of the strongest Dalek stories. I see why it's so high in the dorm best of 2014 poll um, is how yeah. it's so high um, yeah, really because yeah. it is a particularly strong one. Very good. The characters in it are very, very good. Yeah, I I like Ben and Polly as companions. Yeah, I, um, I, I wouldn't say they're anywhere near my favourite. They're not, but, but I, I. I prefer them in this one than I did in Moonbase. Yeah, I like Polly. Yeah, I like Polly. Yeah. Yeah. Ben's a bit of a sort of. Cheeky chappy. Yeah. Mm. Apples and pears, apples and pears. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, all in all, really enjoyed watching this. Really enjoyed it. I mean, the animation's brilliant. Mm -hmm. The story is brilliant. Yeah. Um, I mean, the vocals of it, it's just really good sound. Well, when you, when you think that it was apparently just taken from uh, a recording of the telly, They've done a brilliant job in, in bringing that to life. Yeah, it was brilliant. The, yeah. the, the sound. Really, really good. Yeah. Okay, so um, too good, too, too, good, good. too bad. Um, so then, good, I'd say for me is, um, it's a great story to introduce the second Doctor to right. us. Yeah, and I think with that, that just that whole, it was so clever. The whole concept about regeneration and the fact yeah. they didn't they didn't just look to recreate. Another person that they played exactly the same character. Yeah, they as didn't William just. Hartnell. They didn't just do like James Bond. Yeah, no, where that's right. it's just like you know, had they had a change in James Bond before this time? Or um, I can't remember. I don't think so. No. Ah. But I, I think that it's great that they used regenerations to bring, breathe new life into the Doctor each time by giving him a. It's like having a completely different character. Yeah. Um, 
My my good then I think will be the progression of the Daleks throughout the story. Yes. I think that that's I, th- I thought that was really really good, and the fact that it, it each episode seems to get more exciting than the last one. It did, yeah. Um, bad. Um, hard to think of this. Um, the animation. If it had a couple of days more, could yeah. have improved on slight bits. Um, I would say. Uh, what would we have? That's always so hard, apart it from is, the bad episodes. Mm. Like class as well today. We've both yeah. st- we struggled on both of them. Yeah. Um, bad. Oh, there's only six episodes. Yeah, why didn't they have more? <laughs> why couldn't it be like Daleks Master Plan? <laughs> yes, Daleks. They need to do Daleks Master Plan. <laughs> I dreamt about that coming back. I think uh, that that that'd be the only thing for me. I, I, I think um, actually, to be to be fair, I thought it was it was really well paced. I don't think there isn't any bad. No. So it's it's too good. One, one bad. bad, and it's and not really bad. a bad. No. Um, it's just something they can improve on. Mm-hmm. We should say, too good, one improve. Too good, two improvements. <laughs> um. So scores on the doors. Um. Character development out of ten. Really good on this because it introduces you to Patrick Troutman's Doctor, and I love the way that it focuses around Ben and Polly trying to get to grips with him as well. Uh, so he's he's trying to get to grips with himself, and they're trying to get to grips with him. Um, I'm going to say it's an um, nine. Monsters and villains. Daleks at their best. Yes. In fact, you know, the Daleks are stronger than they are in Genesis. Cause they Genesis are, because is Genesis is all about Davros. Yeah. So I, I'm going to say this is actually the strongest Dalek. Dalek yeah, on their so. Daleks on their own, yeah. without Davros yeah. there to support them. Yeah, the most menacing. So I'm going to give it a nine for that. Well. Um, um, excitement. Very exciting. I'm going to give it an eight for excitement. Um, pace. Really good pace. I'm going to give it a nine for pace. And just going back to excitement really briefly, without saying what happens, but the, the, the final scenes in it, I think, are actually quite explosive and, are, and gory, yeah. really. They are, quite, yeah. You know, very, for, the, for the time they were... Because no. for, 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 for the point when it, the time when it came out, I think it must have been quite a... Yeah. A real shock to the system. Yeah. Um, and story? Really good story. Nine for story. 44 out of 15. Wow. Overall yeah. then, as an initial score, a normal score. Out of 10, it's one of the strongest episodes I think I've seen. Yeah. I'm going to give it 9.5. It's great to see something new, isn't it? Mm. Um, 9.5. Um, I... Yes, I'm going to agree with you. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So there we have it. That was Power of the Dogs. Yeah. That gives us one final thing before we say goodbye this week. And that is finding out what we're going to be reviewing la- next week. So last week we fixed the randomizer. And the randomizer is an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, we'll, we'll just still carry on. I asked yeah, no, the that's second fine. Week. Yep. Um, it's an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, we click a button, and it randomly tells us what's going to pop up uh, and what we're going to be watching and reviewing on next week's show. Okay. So, so, what have we got on the magic randomizer next week? Da-da-da-da. Please be something good. Okay. Uh, do we have that? Yep. Yes. Okay. That's good. Um, so next week mm-hmm. we'll be going back to the first Doctor's era yeah. and we will be watching the Time Meddler. The Time Meddler. The meddling monk himself. Brilliant. You've been wanting to watch I this have, one. I have been you? wanting to watch this one, yeah. Um, this has got Stephen and Vicky, two companions you've never seen in it before. Where was it? Oh, so. that, that's good actually, yeah. I'm thinking yeah. since we met Stephen. Yeah. Well, so so Stephen and Vicky were the companions in this one. It's quite a good one. Um, yeah. But uh, we'll be letting you know. We've got that on here, haven't we? Yes, we have. Yeah. Um, we'll be letting you know what we thought, what we think of the time meddler 
in next week's show. Brilliant. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this week's show. Yeah. Um, hopefully, I will be uh, back to my normal jolly self next yeah. week and contributing to discussions. Yeah. Thank more. you. Thank you for um, joining yeah. us, everyone. Um, please let us. Uh, wait, no, we'll do next time first. Next time it's episode one eight seven, and we will be um, discussing um, fifty years of Patrick Troughton. Mm-hmm. We will be discussing Patrick Troughton's Doctor, uh, his best moments, and uh, what we think of him, and how Doctor Who took a step into its new era, which happened this month. So, um, what else? We'll be giving you our thoughts on the Time Meddler, as just revealed. Yeah, we will be reviewing uh, the Metaphysical Engine, or what Miss Quill did, or Episode 7 of Class. We'll be giving you some news and views from the universe. Um, then, and we will be pressing the magic randomizer button because time metal is only four parter. So. Excellent. Okay. Thank you yeah. very much. Um, yeah. Thank you for joining us. Um, remember to um, go on uh, tweet us at, at drhu time and space. Let us know what you thought of the recently animated Power of the Daleks. Uh, your top six companions, um, your opinions on episode six of class, and for next week you could tell us what you think of the time meddler and um, what you think of uh, what your favourite Patrick Trout moment is. Fantastic. Um, so, um, we'll see you next time, same time. Same space. Goodbye!